Welcome back everybody. We're now in problem 18 and the question is, for what value of x is 2x over 3x minus 1 undefined? So what do we know about fractions? When is a fraction undefined? Well, a fraction is undefined when the denominator is equal to 0 because you can't have a division by 0. So in our case, this translates to 3x minus 1 is equal to 0. And if we add 1 to both sides of this equation, we get that 3x is equal to 1. Now if we divide both sides of the equation with 3, we get that x is equal to 1 third. So for x equal to 1 third, this denominator over here, 3x minus 1, is equal to 0. And therefore this fraction, this whole fraction is undefined. And that's what we're looking for. So the correct answer, correct answer is C. Problem 19 asks, a sales team sold an average arithmetic mean of 10.375 mobile phones per week during the first eight weeks of the last quarter of the year. The members of the sales team will receive a bonus if they sell a total of 185 phones for the quarter. What must their average sales in phones per week be for the remaining five weeks of the quarter if they are to receive the bonus. So the question says that they've already been selling 10.375 mobile phones in average per week for eight weeks and they need to sell 185 phones in total in order to get a, a bonus. But they only have five weeks left till the end of the quarter. So how many phones do they need to sell in average in order to get the bonus? Well, let's just see how many phones they've sold already. So phones sold that's the number of phones they have sold already. And if they're selling an average of 10.375 for eight weeks, that's going to be 10.375 times eight. That's going to give us the total number of phones that they've sold already. And that is 83. Now, how many phones do they need to sell in order to get the bonus? So phones to sell, phones to sell in order to get the bonus, right? And we know that they have to sell 185 phones to get the bonus, but they've already sold 83 phones, right? So how many phones do they need to sell in those five weeks that they have remaining? Well, that is 102 phones, right? And if they need to sell 102 phones in five weeks, what will their average sales be in order for, get, for them to get the bonus in those five weeks? So the average, average sales for the five weeks, for the five weeks, right? So we know that they have to sell 102 phones in total divided by five because they have five weeks left. It's going to give us the average number of phones that they have to sell per week, and that is 20.4. And that is the answer that we're looking for. So the correct answer of this problem, correct answer, is B. On problem 20, the question is, what is the y-coordinate of the point at which the line whose equation is 3x minus 2x minus 7 crosses the y-axis? Well, so what do we know when a line crosses the y-axis? Let's just assume that this is our graph over here, and this is our line right here. Okay, so this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. What happens at this point right over here? What happens over here? Well, at this point, we know that the x value of that point is always 0. The x value is always 0 because it's on the y-axis. So that's the way to go about finding this point. You can just put x equal to 0, so that's 3 times 0 because x as I said is equal to 0, minus 2y minus 7 is equal to 0. And that gives us minus 2y minus 7 is equal to 0, and that means minus 2y is equal to 7. So y is equal to minus 7 seconds. And that is the correct answer. So the correct answer in terms of options, the correct answer is A. Problem 21 states that, in the figure above, the sides of the rectangle ABCD are parallel to the axis. What is the distance between point A and point C? Now let me just draw the distance between points A and C. The length of this line right here that I've drawn, the length of line AC is equal to the distance between points A and point C. 
So what do we know about AC? Well, we know that AC is equal to BD. We know that the distance between point A and point C is equal to the distance between point B and D. But why is that? Well, since ABCD is a rectangle and AC and BD are both diagonals of this rectangle, they both have the same length. So the distance between point A and point C is equal to BD. And the distance between points A and point C is what we're looking for, so it's much easier to calculate it in terms of BD because we already know points B and D. So let me write this down. So AC is equal to BD. And I'm not going to use the formula that you use to find the distance between two points. And that is equal to the root of 7 minus minus 1, 7 minus minus 1, and that squared plus minus 3 minus 4, minus 3 minus 4, and that squared, and that is equal to the root of 8 squared plus 7 squared. And remember, 7 is the same thing as minus 7 when it's squared because the sign doesn't matter when you square a number. So that's equal to the root of 64 plus 49. So that is equal to the root of 113. And let's just use our calculator to calculate that. So the root of 113 is equal to 10.6301. And that is equal to basically 10.6. So the correct answer on this problem, the correct answer is D. So problem 22 states that four signal flags, one red, one blue, one yellow, and one green, can be arranged from top to bottom on a signal pole. Every arrangement of the four flags is a different signal. How many different signals using all four flags have a red flag at the top? So let's just see how many different flags we have. What different flags we have? We have the red flag, we have the blue flag, and then we have the yellow flag, and then we have the green flag. Now, this, let me make this clear, this is a permutation problem because order does matter. Having your flags placed in a different position, in a different order, actually matters. It's a different signal. Well, that's why it's a permutation problem. But I'm going to try to make it a little bit simpler, simpler, not just go ahead and solve it as a permutation. I'm going to try to actually demonstrate this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and draw all of the different arrangements that you could possibly get of those flags. So the different arrangements of those flags. And hopefully that's going to make it a little bit easier for you to comprehend a little bit, break it down for you a little bit. So what could we possibly have in the second position? And I'm only going to draw those three flags in these arrangements because, you know, the red flag, the problem says, has to always be at the top position. So that means that the red flag is not going to give us a different arrangement. The red flag is always going to stay up here at the top. So all the different arrangements are going to come from these final three flags being placed in different positions. So I'm only going to draw those three flags. So what if we had in this position over here in the second position, what if we had the blue flag at the top? How many different flags could we put beneath it? Well, we could either put the yellow flag as it is over here at the side, or we could put the green flag. And what flag is going to go at the bottom, basically? Well, whatever flag is left is going to go at the bottom because we've already used each one of the other flags. And we could do the same thing that I did right here for each flag being placed at the top over here. So if I had the yellow flag at the second position, I could either put the green flag beneath it or the blue flag beneath it. And then whatever is left is going to go in the last position. And then we could either, and then we could have the green flag at the top. And that's a the same case as before, we could either have the yellow flag beneath it, or we could have the blue flag beneath it, and whatever flag is left is going to go at the bottom. So, as you can see over here, we've made all of the different arrangement of flags that you could possibly get, where the red flag is always at the top. So you could imagine that in all of those arrangements, the red flag is at the top. So what we, we're going to go ahead and do right now is just go ahead and count how many arrangements we have. We have arrangement number one, arrangement number two, three, four, five, six. So we have six different arrangements, six different arrangement of flags that give us six different uh, possibilities. So that's the answer. But I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more of a more sophisticated answer. And not that sophisticated, but still it's simple, but uh, it's going to explain a lot. Well, 
what we could say is that since the first flag is always going to be the red flag, it doesn't really matter, right? So what we have in the second position actually matters. So what flag could we put in the second position? Well, we could either put the blue flag, the yellow flag, or the green flag because we've already used the red flag. So we have three different possibilities. How many different flags can we put in the third position over here? Right over here. Well, since we've already used one of the flags for the second position and we already used the red flag, we have two remaining flags. For example, in this case, we've already used the blue flag and the red flag. So we have two different possibilities, either the yellow flag or the green flag. So two different possibilities. And how many flags can we put in the last position? Well, whatever flag is left is going to go in the last position because, you know, you're actually forced to do that. So that is the same thing, 3 times 2 times 1, as saying that, you know, for each flag that you can put in the second position, there are two other flags that you can place in the third position. And that's the same thing if you multiply 3 times 2 times 1 as 3 factorial. And you've seen this in permutations probably. So if you had like 10 flags, you could say 10 factorial, and that would be much easier to calculate in your calculator. But in this case, it's quite easy. So 3 times 2 times 1 is equal to 6. So we got the same number of combinations in this case as we got by counting all of the different arrangements. So the correct answer on this problem, the correct answer, answer is C.